Hey guys, it's Chris Hernandez from Music Combat Photography and I'm going to do a real quick walkthrough today of how to develop film and all. So um, I have uh, one roll of 120 film, medium format film that I shot on this beautiful little uh, Graflex baby speed graphic 2x3. Um, I shot 10 shots with the roll film back. Uh, this is a recent acquisition so I'm waiting to see you know, how well it does. Um, but I just wanted to show you how easy it is to, f to develop black and white film at home. It's, it's way simpler than I ever thought it was. And I'm gonna offer a caveat right off the bat that I'm not saying the way I do it's the best way. I'm just saying it's, an e it's easy and it's a way to get you started. And if you follow my steps at first and then go on to do it a better way, hey man, more power to you. So uh, I'm gonna explain the basic process. So basically you've got, you've loaded your film into a developing tank. Um, that's a whole different deal. There's plenty of videos about how to do that. But the biggest thing to remember for those of you who know nothing about film and who always had the impression, like I did, that you have to have a dark room. You don't need a dark room. All you need is a dark room, like a closet with no lights on anywhere, where you can take your film off of the, off of the roll and load it into the reel and put it in the developing tank. Once it's in the tank, you can do everything else in the light. So I'm going to do everything right here at my bathroom counter. Um, so basically, it's just a matter of mixing the proper uh, um, solution to the uh, chemistry, your developer, how much water versus how much developer. Um, you mix that, you pour it in the tank. Uh, what I do is I, I have a six and a half minute uh, cycle for the developer. So 15 seconds agitation, then I let, let it sit until I start off at six minutes, 30 seconds, counting down, do it, uh, agitate for 15 seconds, come down to 540, agitate again for 10 seconds, at 5.30, I set it down, um, wait until 4.40, agitate again for 10 seconds, set it down, wait until 3.40, agitate for 10 seconds, that's it. Once that's done, I pour the developer out. Um, I pour it out in the kitty litter. I don't dump it down the drain. Although, you know, there's different people say different things about whether it's safe or not. Figure, well, you know, just, just in case, I'll go ahead and dump it in the kitty litter and then throw it away. I've, I've read that that is an approved method. Um, but after that, you rinse it out two to three times with tap water. I use tap water, not distilled water because a uh, combat photographer, Marine Corps combat photographer from the Vietnam War, who's had a long history, long career in photography, um, he told me, hey man, don't worry about it, still just use tap water, even in Vietnam we use tap water, so I'm listening to him. Um, rinse out with tap water a couple of times, apply fixer, pour fixer in there, agitate for three and a half minutes straight, pour the fixer back into its, uh, its container, then you rinse for 10 minutes, and again, I'm just rinsing under the, under the tap water. I'm not worried about the temperatures on anything other than developer. A lot of people worry about, you know, everything, all the water has to be the same temperature. To me, it doesn't seem to make any difference as long as the developer is 68 to 70 degrees in, in this case. Everything else doesn't really matter. It's not freezing, it's not boiling, it's not really gonna make any difference. Um, then I, but I do 10 minutes of rinsing. Then I pour in uh, a wetting agent, which just helps with, you know, spots not forming on the, on the uh, film as it's drying. And I take it out of the developing tank. I do the uh, agent for one minute with agitation. Then I take the film out, take it upstairs, and hang it in the closet to dry. So I'm going to show you um, my supplies and how it looks when I'm working. Okay, so this is it. I've got my developer right over here, my fixer here, of course, my developing tank. This is the wetting agent. I've already mixed it. Here's where I'm about to mix the developer right here. Um, yeah, here's the actual developer. I'm going to Put the right amount, 38 uh, milliliters in here, mix it up with that, pour it back and forth between the two containers a couple of times to mix it up. Um, nitrile gloves, I always use those. I use a meat thermometer to make sure that I've got the correct water temperature. And here you can see that I'm at 69 degrees. So it's fine. This developer has to be between 68 and 70. I've got a little a kid's timer that we use for uh, one of my sons for uh, school stuff. And that works great. And that costs like, I don't know, $2 or something. But this is the entire space that I need right here to develop. That's it. Uh, that ain't much. Down here is my kitty litter. All right. So now I'm, now I'm about to uh, walk through the process and show you how I do it. Okay, guys. So I'm about to start the development process. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. It'll, it'll bore the hell out of you if I just show you me sitting here shaking the tank around, pouring water in and out. Basically, here's my tank. I've already mixed up my developer um, right here. So I am going to take off 
the lid, this is a light tight tank so I can take the lid off totally safe, I'm not going to expose the film. Take my developer, pour it in. Put the lid back on, start my timer, and now I'm doing 15 seconds agitation to get it started. Um, once I finish the agitation, I am going to set the uh, tank down 15 seconds. I do that to dislodge bubbles. So um, the bubbles have to, some effect on how the contrast develops in the negatives. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm waiting to get to 540. Remember, I started this at 630 on the clock. I'm waiting until I get to 540. While I'm waiting, I am cleaning out my developing uh, beaker, setting it down until the dry. And now I am at almost 540, almost. 540. Gonna do this for 10 seconds. Okay, I'm at 530. And now I'm going to wait until 440. Basically, I'm going to do that until I get down to the last 15 seconds. Uh, then I'll do 15 seconds agitation to finish it. Then I will pour my developer into the kitty litter and go to the, uh, then I'll rinse it two or three times using tap water and then go to the fixer. So I'm going to pause here and then I'll show you uh, what the rinsing is like, what the fixing is like, all that stuff. Okay, so here I'm doing my last 15 seconds of agitation. So the actual cycle, part of the cycle with the developer is almost done. Um, like I said, once I get done with this, I'm gonna pour it down into a bag of kitty litter um, because that's, you know, safer. All right, that 6.30 is up. That just went into the kitty litter. So what I'm gonna do now is um, I'm going to rinse this out with tap water two to three times, probably three, and I'm getting ready to do my um, fixing process. So when I say rinse it out with tap water, I mean just rinse it out with tap water. Fill the, fill the tank with tap water, put the lid back on, agitate for a few seconds. Dump it out. Do it again, maybe do it again after that. Um, that's just to make sure that all the developer is out of there before you put in the fixer. And what happens if you if there's still developer in the tank when you put in the fixer? I have no idea, but it's probably not good. So, um, you know, people who know what they're doing say, rinse it out, so I'm rinsing it out. All right, so that's two. And now the third time. Um, something you'll see is with different kinds of film, you get different colors, even, when, even after you pour the developer out, when you're rinsing it out, some of them will come out green. At, you know, when you're rinsing, when you, you pour out the first rinse, sometimes it'll be green, sometimes it'll be yellow. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, every time I've done it, it's turned out okay, so uh, I don't worry about what color comes out. Okay, so I finished rinsing. Now I'm gonna take my fixer. I've already set on my timer, I've set 3.30. So, shake the fixer up a little bit. I don't know if it makes any difference, but just in case, pour in the fixer. Okay. Put the cap on and start my three and a half minutes of agitation. Also, I didn't mention earlier, the reason I had the towel on the counter is because I'm always wiping up if there's any, you know, water leaks out of the tank. Um, just always use an old towel to clean it up. Something else is I set the fixer in the sink because you can reuse the fixer. Um, one, you know, 500 milliliters of fixer, you can use about 10 times. Uh, I've got more than that in here. I'm keeping track of how many uses um, I get up. I mean, how many times I'm using this. This is a, a fresh batch. Um, but one the very first time that I developed film, I 
did not put my fixer container in the sink. And after I got done doing the fixer portion, I got confused and I accidentally dumped all of my fixer down the drain. Now it's not that it's dangerous, but I just wasted all that fixer. So I now put my fixer container in the sink so that I don't accidentally uh, pour out, pour the fixer down the drain. Okay, so I'm doing this for two and a half minutes. I'm not gonna have you watch the whole thing. I don't wanna bore the hell out of you. So, um, but understand that's what I'm doing. Three and a half minutes of fixing and then I'm gonna do 10 minutes of rinsing. Okay, and now I have finished with the fixer. So I am opening up the tank and pouring the fixer back into its container. Okay, you can pretty much expect you're gonna lose a little bit of fixer every time you develop, because uh, all tanks leak a little bit. Um, when you pour it out, there's still a little bit left in the tank and it's gonna get washed out And you know when you go through this 10 minutes of rinsing. Um, but uh, you know, developer, you should be able to use use it ten times before you have to worry about it, uh, or so I'm told. So um, anyway, the next step, like I said, is ten minutes of rinsing. So just like I was doing before, you fill it up in the uh, you fill it up from the tap, put the lid on there. I'm starting my ten minutes, and I'm agitating. Uh, agitating constantly um, and I'll probably do about 10 times of filling this dumping it out okay so I'm not gonna show you that whole thing just so you know I'm rinsing pouring out the water refilling it doing it again until 10 minutes right all right be right back okay so I just finished my 10 minutes of rinsing so I'm pouring out the water from the develop uh, developing tank now I'm gonna take my wetting agent, basically just 500 milliliters of uh, water with a little bit of, basically a couple of drops of alcohol in it. And this helps keep uh, water spots from developing on the film that's drying. Pour that in. And I have to agitate for one minute. I've already set a minute on the timer. And so let me go over a couple of things. Um, people might wonder why I seem to be like so lax, kind of not too worried about how I'm doing this couple of reasons. One, I'm doing only black and white film. I, I don't do color. Black um, Color is much more complicated. Black and white, you have a whole lot of latitude. Very forgiving. If you screw up, you're probably still going to be okay unless you really badly screw up. The other thing, though, is there were guys like the Marine Combat Photographer I mentioned earlier, Dennis Fisher, um, who was doing a whole lot of good pho photographic work in less than ideal conditions here. I'll show you some of his, his pictures. Um, took some amazing pictures in combat and, you know, developing under very harsh conditions. Then there's Tony Vaccaro. Tony Vaccaro uh, was a World War II infantryman. He was a photographer from high school, wanted to be a combat photographer in the Army, and they wouldn't let him. Well, he winds up taking a camera with him, a little Argus C4, I believe, takes it with him uh, into combat, and he found some chemicals in a, in a bombed-out store somewhere and he would take these 35 millimeter pictures in combat and then develop them in helmets at night and hang them, hang the 35 millimeter strips from trees and stuff. And he got some of the most amazing pictures the world's ever seen. So I don't think you have to be like, you know, Dexter's laboratory in order to do this. Anyway, um, so I just finished my one minute. This is the last step in the cycle. So now I'm following the instructions of Tim Klein from Stearman Press. I believe it's Tim, I think his last name is Klein. Um, the last thing you should do is open up the tank. Don't dump the, uh, don't dump this last bit of fluid out. Take the roll out and unroll it and see what you got. So, uh, I see right off the bat that my film transport on those pictures was a little bit off. So I don't have 10 pictures like I'm supposed to. Looks like I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I've got nine and then a partial 10th, but that one screwed up. Um, but it looks like my pictures came out nice and, nice and clear. And uh, I'm gonna scan these and show them to you so you can see how it turned out. This is just me 
in a very relaxed manner, developing at home and getting some pretty cool pictures. So um, I will film the next part of this tomorrow once I have an opportunity to, uh, once these are dry, I have an opportunity to scan them. So see you on a little bit. Hey guys, so I'm back. I developed the uh, pictures. And um, before I get into showing you the pictures, I just want to do a quick recap of the whole development process. Uh, very simple, it's only, about, it's only six steps. So step one, developing the film. And here I'm gonna put up the instructions for step one. Okay, so pouring in the developer, agitating for a certain time, doing that six and a half minutes, bam. Step two is rinsing. Here's rinsing. Step three is fixing. Step four, rinsing again. Step five is the wetting agent. Step six is opening it up and looking at your awesome pictures. Okay, so it's really simple. And the reason that I, I really want to keep it simple, I describe it very simply, is because I don't want people to be put off by, you know, thinking that developing film is so difficult and that they, it's not worth trying. Okay, so um, the pictures themselves kind of had a problem, not with the development. The development, development was fine. But like I said, I was trying out a new camera. Uh, the... Uh, Calibration on the focus was a little off between the rangefinder and the actual focus, so some of the shots didn't come out quite sharp. However, um, I can show you uh, this one. This is uh, a family member in uh, Brenham, Texas, and she's actually slightly off focus, but still overall the picture looks pretty cool. Um, these two pictures of my beautiful model, I can show you these. Um, this is in my, you know, groovy man room that I kind of use as a studio. Uh, I really like how these turned out. Um, the other ones on that roll, I had some issues with the film transport on the roll also. So the first pictures that I took, the, the film didn't move the way it was supposed to. So I had some pictures stacked up, some double exposures. Um, and the rest of the pictures were special pictures that I took of my wife. And I'm not showing y'all, y'all those bunch of perverts. So, um, I can show you these, those three that I just showed you, and uh, I thought they turned out great. The development was fine. Okay, so the way I develop film, the very lackadaisical, not worried too much about it method that I use, I'm still getting good pictures. Uh, and so, you know, I'm developing them, and I don't have a dark room, so I can't do enlargements and all that stuff. So I'm just scanning my negatives and then editing digitally. And actually, sometimes I'll edit them digitally in Lightroom and then send them to my phone and then edit them a little bit more on my phone. Um, so I'm doing a hybrid between the analog, old analog stuff with you know film developing and all that, and then uh, using the computer for, uh, for the development process, the editing process. Sorry, not development, for the editing process. Um, but that's basically it, that's basically it. So if anyone has any questions, please feel free to reach out. I'm, I'm happy to, to talk through it. I know I kind of, kind of rushed through this. Um, if you have anything else you'd like for me to talk about, I think my next uh, video is probably going to be about this awesome uh, Connie Omega Rapid 100 medium format camera that I got last year for 45 bucks. Um, or maybe someday I'll do a video on this beautiful Omega, I'm not Omega, Jesus, uh, Bush Pressman Model D press camera. It's a beautiful camera that I got for super cheap. Um, and uh, I'll go some more into the world, the beautiful world of film photography. So see y'all next time.